So one of our listeners has asked you to expand on the concept of refounding. Ooh, we caught that. Um, thank you for guessing that. That's, uh, that's interesting you mentioned. It's, um, well, it's the title of our next book, but it's also- Oh, is it really? I yeah, didn't yeah, yeah. That. That's oh, not, that, not as public, but I, it's, really, it's, it's really about the job. What, what's the CEO's job up today? And, um, you know, it's not a job. So founders typically, a, a co-founder, you know, there's two co-founders of Bionic. There's uh, a founder typically in a company. That's a singular job. The refounder is the job to be done for most CEOs today, especially now that this, this future has been accelerated. The digital transformation strategies are now today's strategies, right? So they're not things, yeah. they're theoretical. So the refounder's job is, is really about how do I go back and, and take it back to day one? And, and Alex, you know, you mentioned uh, his new book, The Invincible Company, is a perfect example of how do you implement a day one company. And We've talked about that for years. Jeff Bezos' entire blog is based on that, which is- Could you just you expand treat- on that? Expand on that, because not everybody will know that example. Yeah, so, so, the, so a, day, a day one company is really what Jeff Bezos has been writing about for years in his own philosophy of how he's leading, uh, leading Amazon. And it really captures uh, the, basically a growth mindset um, that, that really is around uh, his first shareholder letter in 1997 about how I think. And he said, a company that's a day one company has the attitude, hunger, and passion, and the ability to move and adapt instantly. So its willingness to take risks and its energy is so profound because the enthusiasm is as good as it gets. So what does that mean in practice? From a management perspective, a day one mindset looks at, it, well, not looks, it obsesses about customer behaviors because they're the path to market leadership. Secondly is they embrace of course, as the growth drivers. And here's a secret of entrepreneurs and VCs, which is when you're successful, it probably has nothing to do with you. It's because it happened to you. You had a hypothesis of the future, problem, need, future. It showed up and you weren't dead when it happened and you have to be executing well. That's why you have to see these great fortunes because they're outside force driven. COVID is an outside force and it's shared experience. It's not one thing, it's everything. And that's why it's so huge. The second, the third thing is you got to make bold versus timid investments. You don't, you don't carefully go into a space. You go on it on offense with a high failure rate. So it teaches you. So the fourth is you have to have it, take it as a portfolio approach. Some bets will work. Some will not. It's decision science. Architecting portfolios is actually science. We've done it for seven years with billions of dollars. Like, you know, after, what's the pattern? The last three are really learning from failures. And so you hear about like, don't, don't let failure go to your head, but you want to get to it quickly and fast so you can get out of the, the dark alleys into the light. And staying lean and fast is, is a huge part of that. And last is you have to change the incentives. So day one companies uh, value little things, right? They're not $50 million little options. They look at that as new oxygen. They're not 50, they're worth 500 because they're creating the new core. And so when you see leaders like David Taylor at P&G start this four years ago with Mark Pritchard and Kathy Fish and at Nike and at, at Growth, uh, at General Mills and TDA, all of our partners, those CEOs are thinking and acting this way, but they need to do it systematically. Bionic is the how to this mindset as a way to work. It's the, it, one of our partners said, it's like the anti-Six Sigma, which is, goes back full circle to what you were saying before for this era. <laughs> 